Dak Prescott deserves his massive extension. Yeah, he does. Not only is it his turn, and I know you hate that. I do. I'll just repeat it again. Zeke is the reason why this team is a championship team. When he's in the game, he's that big of a difference maker because Dak can't do it himself. That was the narrative all summer long. This kid heard it, didn't get phased by the fact that the ownership didn't give him a contract before game number one, didn't threaten to hold out. Number of tweets I saw if I was Dak, I wouldn't even take the field. He takes the field and he dominates, dominates, crushes it. He can do it with his legs. He can do it with his arms. He can do it with his head. He has absolutely taken his game to the next level. And Dallas is a bona fide Super Bowl contender. And if I'm a Cowboys fan, I am St. Jones family. Just do it. Love the guy. What are you going to do? Let him go to another team and try and start from scratch? Right. Don't franchise tag him. Just get it done so it doesn't cost you more money. How much pie is there left? How much pie? There is less pie. Right. Yeah, 400 yards, four touchdowns. I tweeted out the next guy that should hold out is Kellen Moore. Yeah, right. He was phenomenal <laughs> the yesterday. The offensive coordinator. Yeah. Dude. Hey, man, they've done it. They've they've got – they. it was an A-plus performance coaching, general managing, owning, playing – Yesterday for the Dallas Cowboys, A plus across the board. Lamar Jackson had a huge game yesterday. <laughs> let, let, let's hear from him after the game. This was awesome. Not bad for a running back, <laughs> but yeah, um, Austin Lund did a great job. Um, I didn't have, I barely had pressure. But she was did a great job of getting open, catching the ball, scoring touchdowns. That's what it's all about, and that's what we did today. Only he, ran three times, baby. He was asked about how well he threw it. Not bad for running back. So what's your what's your so the question? Over, the overreaction here is Lamar Jackson and the Ravens are for real. I mean, they played an FCS opponent yesterday. You know what? And I I I I, I will say this here: they played a team trying to you, lose. You know how? You know, first of all, they're not trying to lose. It's a front office trying to lose. They're the succeeding. The players are not trying to lose. The players and the coaches are not trying to lose. The front offices. So. I will address the Dolphins coming up later. Okay. Here, I just want to hit this. You know how I feel about the Ravens. I said July 19th, it's their division. Man, to you've lose. been all over them. I said July 19th, I'm over and sick and tired of people saying Lamar Jackson isn't a real quarterback or they won't be able to win with him because he can't throw. He ran it three times yesterday. And they are for real coming at you. And the whole idea that it was just the Dolphins, you still have to execute. You still have to make the plays. When your receivers have a step on somebody or two, you still have to hit them. When the defensive line you're going at is tired, you still have to execute on offensive line and make the mistakes. You still need to hit the hole if you're running backs. You still need to make your blocks if you're up front. And the Ravens did it. And you still have to take an opponent when they're down and kick them when they're down. You still have to come up with the first ever 40-burger in a first half in week one history. You still have to go for it with your backup quarterback on fourth down like they did with RG3 because he's got to get ready if the next guy, if, if Lamar goes down. You still have to be that coach who makes the other coach say, what's your deal, bro? And that's the Harbaugh family. <laughs> they are for real. Let this serve as notice served. Speaking of letting an opponent up off the mat, you got another one for me? Yeah, one more. We're going to talk to Dalvin Cook, Vikings running back in the third hour. The Minnesota Vikings can win the NFC North. Yeah, I said that they could. That's, that's not a, an overreaction. Give me the other one. Uh, same old Jets. Ah! Here's the way it's not an overreaction. Le'Veon Bell was terrific. Looked pretty good. Okay. And the Jets don't have Le'Veon Bells, with the exception of Curtis Martin, and maybe back in my day, good old Freeman McNeil. So that's different. But I want to say this to my Jets fan base friends. Like Greeny, who's renaming his kids Sam and Darnold. Let's see Sam Darnold do it first, please. Let's see Sam Darnold 
hit Robbie Anderson in the fourth quarter like he needed to to come back from a a 16-0 lead that the Jets had and hardly added anything onto because they didn't do squat with three first-half turnovers handed to them by the Bills. Squat. The touchdown was a defensive one that Josh Allen essentially handed him. Let's see Sam Darnold overcome a kicking game that is so dreadful that they went ahead and took the Vikings kicker who they cut after trading a fifth-round pick for. They took that kid, Vedvik. I don't even know if I got his name right. That might have been a whole mad dog situation right there. They took that kid. Hey, Jets, Carly Lloyd's from New Jersey. It's a local call. Make it. And I understand this, that Sam Darnold has a ton of ability. Let's see him do it. This is the moment your first overall chosen quarterback, third overall, but you chose him first round. This is the moment in week one when your team's struggling, he says, I got it. Yesterday, he didn't have it. And now they're on one. They're on one in division, on one at home in division to the Bills. And another reason why, not an overreaction, Rockman and the New England Patriots are sitting back after one week again in a season with their arms behind their heads like Red Auerbach smoking a cigar. This division's toast. That's overreaction Monday for 2019 week one. For more of the Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download the Rich Eisen Show app.